Hi everyone, I'm back today with another video and it's going to be on nuclear fission. I'm going to attach some exam questions at the end so you can see how you can actually use your knowledge to get marks in the exam. It's a really stinky day in January at the moment, it's really grey, probably needs some lighting on but then it reflects in my glasses which is really awkward so we're going to have to cope with semi-gloom unfortunately. Now in this video I'm going to discuss nuclear fission and I'm going to talk about its definition, I'm going to talk about the nuclear reactor and I'm going to talk about the chain reaction that's set up and the various roles of like the control rods, the moderator, etc. Don't confuse nuclear fission with nuclear fusion. Remember, only some exam boards need this, but nuclear fusion is what occurs in stars. It's the joining of nuclei, i.e. fusion. So don't confuse it with nuclear fission. Go check out my video on stars if you're unsure what I'm talking about here, because right now we are concentrating on nuclear fission. Now, a good place to start is the definition of nuclear fission. You just need to write down that it is the splitting of atomic nuclei. Whatever you do, don't write it's the splitting of atoms. They will not give you a mark for that. It's very specifically the splitting of a nuclei. Now, how is it carried out? What they do is they fire a neutron at something like uranium-235, so that's your atomic nuclei, and what happens is that nuclei splits and it sends off two or three other neutrons which go off and hit other uranium nuclei which split, and before you know it, a chain reaction is set up, and we can see very quickly that that could become out of control. Now, why do we even bother doing this? It's because we're really interested in the huge amount of energy that this generates, and if they ask you about the type of energy generated, you need to say that it is kinetic energy. And we're interested in generating this huge amount of energy because we can then harness it to produce electricity. So if they ask you how nuclear fission can lead to the production of electricity, you simply need to say that the energy released is used to heat water and that water is used to generate steam then point out that steam turns a turbine and lastly say that the turbine turns a generator and that is indeed what produces electricity so it's a very useful reaction however there, so there are massive advantages of nuclear power in the fact i'm going to touch on this now the fact that it generates a huge amount of energy however and it's a very reliable source of energy however there are disadvantages First of all, it's unrenewable because once that uranium um, nuclei runs out, just you can't generate any more. Secondly, you've got problems in case any of that radioactive waste that's produced, you need to store it really carefully because if it's allowed to escape into um, water sources underground, before you know it, you've got a contaminated water source. And if there's radiation in the water, then that can lead to mutation of cells, which leads to cancer. So lots of issues there. And the third disadvantage is the high decommissioning costs. What that actually means is I think nuclear power stations can only run for about 20 years. I don't know why, but effectively at that point they then need to be taken apart. And clearly because of all the radio radiation, that's going to be a very expensive process. Anyway, I didn't really want to talk too much about that. I want to go back to the crux of nuclear fission. I want to talk about what's happening inside the nuclear reactor. So as I said previously, we have a massive chain reaction that's setting off and we need to control that because otherwise a massive explosion could occur and it could kill lots of people. So the nuclear reactor is very specifically designed to prevent it becoming out of control. It has things called control rods. What they do is they dip down into that uranium and what they do is they absorb excess neutrons. So rather than two to three neutrons getting them released and hitting more nuclei which release another two to three neutrons and a huge amount of energy is released they absorb excess neutrons, allowing only one neutron to be fired off um, each time, and that will obviously slow down the entire reaction and keep it safe. You've got a moderator, and that slows down the neutrons, and again, that will control the speed of the reaction. And you have a coolant, again, that will, that will absorb some of the kinetic energy of those neutrons, again, slowing down the reaction. Surrounding the nuclear reactor, you'll find a shield or shielding, and that tends to be made out of steel or concrete, one question they like to say is, so why does the shielding exist? So you want to say to prevent that radiation escaping, and you need to point out that that radiation is very penetrating for a second mark, which means it flows, not flows, but it can go travel a long way through the air. So that's why that shielding is there to stop it. Right, I have a feeling I've said everything I wanted to say, actually. This video was not as long or tedious to make as I worried it might be, I'm going to attach some questions now. You will find that in the questions they love mixing in fusion and half-life and um, like alpha, beta, gamma um, questions. So I haven't touched on those because that belongs to my radioactivity video 
So go check, maybe go check that one out at the same time now, go look at it now. And then when you've watched both this video and that video, you can then go on to answer the questions that I'm about to attach. Because I don't want you being confused why I'm suddenly talking about alpha decay or beta decay. Anyway, please like this video. Um, if you enjoyed it, I hope you found it helpful. I hope you're all doing okay and that revision isn't too stressful. Um, obviously pose any questions and I'll try and get back to you. And don't forget to subscribe. And yeah, okay guys, see ya. Question three. Many countries use nuclear power stations to generate electricity. Nuclear power stations use the process of nuclear fission to release energy. Part A. What is nuclear fission? And simply put, you need to say that it is the spitting of an atomic nucleus. Make sure you mention the word nucleus. If you say atom, you won't get the mark. Part two. Plutonium-239 is one substance used as a fuel in a nuclear reactor. For nuclear fission to happen, the nucleus must absorb a particle. What type of particle must be absorbed? If you can imagine that diagram of the chain reaction, remember that it's a neutron that gets released and then they ping off and go and hit more nuclei and then the chain reaction is set up. So the answer here is a neutron. 3b, nuclear fusion also releases energy. Nuclear fusion happens at very high temperatures. A high temperature is needed to overcome the repulsion force between the nuclei. I realise there's some exam boards you don't need to know about nuclear fusion, so if you're one of those exam boards, don't worry about this part of my video, but I'm just going to complete this question for argument's sake. Why is there a repulsion, repulsion force between the nuclei of atoms? Remember it's because atom nuclei are positively charged because they're full of protons and neutrons, and neutrons have no charge, so fundamentally they're positively charged, and therefore if you make two positive things try to collide or fuse, they're going to repel. So you just want to say here that the nuclei are positive um, and that cause repulsion. Where does nuclear fusion happen naturally? That is in stars. 6a. There are many isotopes of the element molybdenum, MO. What do the nuclei of different molybdenum isotopes have in common? Remember your definition of an isotope here is atoms of the same element with the same number of protons but different number of neutrons. So clearly what they have in common here is they have the same number of protons. 6b. The isotope molybdenum-99 is produced inside some nuclear power stations from the nuclear fission of uranium-235. What happens during the process of nuclear fission? Effectively, that's asking for the definition of nuclear fission, so you want to say that atomic nuclei are split. Part 2. Inside which part of the nuclear power station would molybdenum be produced? And the crucial thing here is to mention the nuclear reactor. 6c. When the nucleus of a molybdenum 99 atom decays, it emits radiation and changes into a nucleus of technetium-99. What type of radiation is emitted by molybdenum-99? So what you need to do here is look at the difference between the proton number and the mass number to work out what's going on. So we can see here that the top number has not changed, i.e. the mass number has not changed. And if we look at the atomic number, so the number below, we can say that see that it has increased by 1. This tells me straight away that it is beta radiation, because remember in beta radiation, a neutron turns into a proton and stays within the atom in question. So by definition, therefore, the mass will not have changed because the mass of a proton and a neutron is the same. But because the proton, there is now an extra proton, it means that the proton number will have increased by 1. So that's my reasoning. I'm going to say it is beta, and you could have said because the proton number or the atomic number has increased by 1, or you could say that the number of neutrons has decreased by 1, or you could have said the mass number does not change, or you could have even said a neutron becomes a proton. 6D. Technetium-99 has a short half-life and emits gamma radiation. What is meant by the term half-life? And it's the time taken for half the radioactive nuclei to decay. 6e. Technetium-99 is used by doctors as a medical tracer. In hospitals, it is produced inside a technetium generated by the decay of molybdenum-99 nuclei. Figure 7 shows how the number of nuclei in a sample of molybdenum, I swear I'm pronouncing this wrong, 99 changes with time as the nuclei decay. Yeah. A technetium generator will continue to produce sufficient technetium-99 until 80% of the original molybdenum nuclei have decayed. After how many days will the source of molybdenum-99 need replacing? And you need to show clearly your calculation, how you use your graph to obtain your answer. So what we need to do is have a look, and we need it at 80% of the 100,000, which is 20,000. So literally, read across here. Make sure you draw it on the graph to show how you've worked it out. And then pull that number down onto the x-axis. 
and you can say here that it's approximately 6.2 days and they would have accepted anything between 6.2 and 6.3 so do make sure you read off that graph carefully 6b part 2 medical traces are injected into a patient's body this involves some risk to the patient's health explain the risk to the patient of using a radioactive substance as a medical tracer well remember radiation can cause ionization that's one mark and that ionization may mutate or kill healthy cells or you could say it could literally just cause cancer. Part three, even though there may be a risk, doctors frequently use radioactive substances for medical diagnosis and treatments. Suggest why, um, and you just need to say that it's due to the benefit of that diagnosis or that treatment, or you could have even written that it may be the only procedure available. 3A, nuclear power stations generate about 14% of the world's electricity. Uranium-235 is used as a fuel in some nuclear reactors. Name one other substance used as a fuel in some nuclear reactors. Oh, this is quite in-depth. You could write here plutonium. 3A part 2. Energy is released from nuclear fuels by the process of nuclear fission. This energy is used to generate electricity. Describe how this energy is used to generate electricity. Do not explain the nuclear fission process. Okay, this is a question that comes up so often under different guises. It's basically how electricity is generated and it doesn't matter if you're using a nuclear reactor or if you're burning fossil fuels, or really if you're using wind power or something. Although wind is slightly different, so ignore that point. But the point is, what you do is you use the energy released to heat water. That heat, heated water eventually becomes steam. And then what happens is that steam is used to turn a turbine. And then that turbine drives or turns a generator. So whatever the question is, don't worry about it. Just literally write... Energy released used to heat water to produce steam. Steam turns the turbine, turbine turns the generator. I swear it comes up every year. 3B. The diagram shows the nuclear fission process for an atom of uranium-235. Complete the diagram to show how fission process starts a chain reaction. So we want the neutrons that were released to go on and hit more uranium nuclei. So we're just going to call that uranium-235. This neutron is going to hit another uranium and then more neutrons will be released. And they'll go off and hit more uranium. I'm just going to label these neutrons. But yeah, that's fundamentally, in essence, what you need. 3C. The diagram shows the cross-section through a nuclear reactor. The control rods made from boron are used to control the chain reaction. Boron atoms absorb neutrons without undergoing nuclear fission. Why does lowering the control rods reduce the amount of energy released each second from the nuclear fuel? And the point here is that the control rods are used to literally control the reaction to prevent it being dangerous. So for the first mark, you want to state that neutrons are absorbed by the control rods. This means that there are fewer neutrons, and as, an, as a result of this, the chain reaction slows down. So you could have said for the two marks any of those, any two from those three points, but I would probably say the neutrons are absorbed by the control rods, meaning that there are fewer neutrons. Although really that's the same point, so maybe it would be good to say that the chain reaction slows down. 11. In a nuclear reactor, uranium-235 nucleus absorbs a neutron and fission occurs. Complete the equation below that shows a typical fission reaction. Please don't find this totally overwhelming. We can work it out. So we've got uranium-235 going in and a neutron is fired at it, leading to, I think that's barium and krypton being produced as the smaller nuclei and three neutrons given off. So basically, it's like um, it's just like maths or algebra or something. You just need to make sure that whatever you started out with, which was uranium-235, everything else produced after that has to add up to 235. You can't just randomly lose matter. So effectively, what you need to do is add 142 to 1, and also to 1, because that's the neutrons accounted for. And then if you add those all up and take them away from 235, you'll get an answer which is 91, and that needs to go here. And then the same below, you've now you've got a proton number, an atomic number of 92, and we can see zero against the neutrons, so all we need to worry about is the krypton 36. So just do 92, take 36, and you'll get an answer which is 56. B, explain how nuclear fission can lead to a chain reaction. So for the first mark, you want to say that the neutrons are released, that these are then absorbed by other uranium nuclei, and this causes further fission reactions. For another mark, you could have said that neutrons are slowed by the moderator, but I don't really know why you'd think to write that particularly. 
C, the diagram shows a nuclear reactor. On the diagram, label the control rods and the shielding. So the black things hanging down here are the control rods and the shielding is the box on the outside which prevents excess radiation getting out. Explain why shielding is needed. Um, you need to talk about the fact here that the reactor material or the waste is radioactive and then for the second mark that can lead to cancer which is very dangerous. So that's why you obviously need to shield it and keep it away from people. Um, and the reason why you do need shielding is because remember that radiation is very penetrating. It will pass through a huge amount of air. So you do need that concrete box around it to prevent it getting out. But I'm going to stop there. I hope I've helped you out with this video. It is quite a tricky topic. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video and I'll be back soon with another one. See you guys.